fundamental truth to our nature. Man must explore. And this is exploration at, at its greatest. It's time to turn the tables on adversaries with the first endpoint platform that dynamically strengthens your security posture. The power to prioritize incoming threats through real-time global telemetry, predict your risk level and ability to counter threats that matter, and act before they enter your organization. Win the battle before it begins. McAfee Endpoint Security, now intelligently driven by MVision Insights. See it in action at mcafee.com slash endpoint. But it's not your cloud, is it? Everybody's got access to that. For the next presentation here in the studio, we have the wonderful Matisse from Real Security and also hopefully listening to us from Cork in Ireland from McAfee, Kevin O'Dwyer. Kevin, can you hear us? Great, I can't hear you. I will talk to, um, I will talk to <laughs> Matisse first. Oh, Chris, um, ah, now I get you. I I'm Perfect. You okay, good. Great. You Excellent. Mean. Thank you so much, Kevin. I'd like to have a quick word with uh, Matisse first. So uh, listen in because it's about McAfee. Uh, how do you see McAfee? What, what's the position as a, a, a seller of security as their platform? I've been working with McAfee for the last 10 years, for sure. And of course, like every other company, they have some ups and downs. But for the last two years, especially for the last year, they made the best-in-class Gartner Sassy Ready suit. And also with the XDR, they are stronger than ever. And I truly know that competitors are these days afraid. I get a feeling that you're probably not going to argue with that, Kevin. No, I'll, I'll always take a compliment, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> now you're in the lovely city of Cork. Uh, that's the centre yeah. of sailing. It really is a historical place. It, it is indeed. It is indeed. Apparently, the the oldest sailing club in the British Isles is in Cork. Although people argue about that constantly, but we'll claim it anyway. It's a place I've never managed to get to. I don't know why, but coming round Land's End to get to you is kind of a bit daunting to me. <laughs> I did it last summer, actually. I, uh, we did the Fastnet race, uh, so we uh, we did that, did that exact journey. So uh, it's a lot of fun. Oh. You should do it someday. I wish I'd known that because that means you kept in. You came into Plymouth at the end of the Fastnet race. I did indeed, I and did I was indeed. there on my boat. <laughs> Shame we didn't have a communication <laughs> before that one. We could have had a beer or two. Never mind. Yes, Let's get on time. with the conversation. Uh, uh, have you got any more comments to, to make to uh, I believe that I said everything. You've done it all? Yeah. You're really impressed with this company? Yeah, I'm truly is. Shall I ask Kevin to give his presentation? Please do so. Kevin, the floor is yours. Great. Thank you very much, guys. So good morning, everybody, and welcome to uh, RISC 2020. Uh, great to have an opportunity to be even virtually with the real security team uh, and our partners and customers in the uh, in the region this morning. Look, the event is very different and I'm sure we would all have preferred to have been in, uh, in Lashko, but uh, ev even with that, we now have a chance to virtually meet each other and learn from each other as we try to address some of the most complex challenges that we've ever faced in cybersecurity. 
This morning, uh, I will share with you McAfee's perspective on uh, what, what exactly we see as those challenges and how we're working to try and address them. Before I jump into the presentation itself, though, uh, we think it's important to show our customers a glimpse of who we are as people at McAfee and what drives the 7,000 people that work for McAfee every day. It's what we call the McAfee Pledge, um, and almost 100% of our employees have signed this pledge. Uh, it's in the form of a pledge wall. We have them at every major site we have across the globe. This one you see here is from the office that I work in. As Chris said, I'm based in Cork in Ireland, and that's our EMEA headquarters. So you can see that our employees uh, have signed all that, and, and as new employees join, they're also invited to sign. The one thing I'd, I'd point out about the pledge is that it, it isn't a pledge to McAfee. It's a pledge to a higher calling. It's a pledge to defend the world from cyber crime and cyber threats. And that's the pledge that drives everything that we do and keeps us focused on what matters most as a, as a company. And, this, and these are some of the things that matter most. This is the, the, the topics that come up most regularly when we talk to our customers around the world, hundreds and thousands of customers. They talk to us about transformation, how they're driving transformation and the complexity of that transformation. Every business is focused on it. Every business has a digital transformation going on to some extent or another. And that's never been more true than since the onset of COVID uh, earlier this year. Um, the, the pace that we're uh, having that transformation at is frightening. And it, it's compounding the challenge for everybody, whether that's sensitive data in the cloud with inadequate protection and security, or whether that's... Uh, uh, cloud deployments that are incorrectly configured. This transformation is by far from simple and straightforward. So we need to partner on this. It's part of the reason why we use that tagline together as power. We need to partner together to make that transformation possible, to make it happen quickly, and most importantly, of course, to make it happen in a secure way. Our customers also talk to us about risk and resiliency. The real cost of cybercrime is continuing to increase at a frightening pace, estimated now to be more than 600 billion annually. Um, and of course, there's a number of things that are continuing to make that a challenge and a problem within organizations. The gaps that have always existed in terms of cultural awareness and readiness to tackle this cybersecurity problem. The problem of executive teams that potentially haven't been, and so in some cases still are not, as engaged as they need to be to try and address that issue. And of course, sometimes inadequate budgets and in inadequate spending to try and tackle some of the real and major challenges that come about um, from a transformation effort. And of course, some of the ghosts of the past are coming back to haunt us because the reactive approach historically taken of deploying point products to address tactical or short-term problems, that's now compounded in the environment we all find ourselves working in with everybody having left offices and now dispersed across the, uh, the, the various locations that they're in. Um, when a security posture is built around a large number of vendors and solutions, eventually it becomes unmanageable. We're seeing that more and more as customers struggle to manage uh, a, a more complex environment and adapt to the impact of COVID-19. If we're ever to regain control, it will require a fundamental shift in our approach. We have to leverage tools and technologies that simplify our environment, making it possible and, and easier for us to stay ahead of our adversaries because our adversaries are working harder than ever. Harder than ever, we have a perfect opportunity for them now, or they have a perfect opportunity, should I say, to exploit the vulnerabilities that we have as a result of the changed work environment we all find ourselves in. Of course, everyone is going to the cloud, and with that, the risk to an organization increases. In 2020, we've seen many of our customers attempt to complete a digital transformation roadmap that was originally scheduled to happen over two or three years. 
We have companies now that are trying to deliver that in three to six months. Just imagine how complex that is and imagine how much risk that brings into an organization. It's not unexpected given the size and scale of the shift in work practices. Many security organizations have gone from supporting hundreds or thousands of employees in a single location to a new world where they're supporting hundreds or thousands of employees in hundreds or thousands of locations. And that's a very, very different landscape. We're in unfamiliar territory. And in many cases, we see enterprises that were unprepared and they're now scrambling to try to regain control of the events around them. Today's reality is very, very different. With the majority of people working from home, companies are more vulnerable to cybercrime than ever. And it's more difficult to manage risks and protect your environment. Of course, business has to continue, and it is continuing, but many are forced to run less securely than ever before, and ironically, that's happening at a time when cyber threats are at their greatest level. Many businesses are challenged with limited visibility into devices and what's happening, and even if a solution is deployed to protect end-user devices, the management of those devices is very labor-intensive. In fact, Supporting those devices is something that most of our customers that we speak to, they seem to be struggling and in many cases, even failing to do that. The end result is that minimum protection has become the default setting. So maintaining compliance, but being far from an optimum security posture. And that's a real concern for many of our customers as we talk to them these days. In the event of an attack happening, Having a simple defense strategy to maintain security posture seems to be very challenging for most security and IT organizations. Those undetected breaches and increases in data losses are heightening employee tension. And in many cases, they're even threatening the brand image of many companies, which is a real concern. We've seen that there are no boundaries for a data breach. And safeguarding your data and devices during a cloud transformation is absolutely critical. The bad actors, cyber criminals, have a fantastic opportunity now that we've shifted to this new landscape and new territory that we haven't explored. We have companies that uh, had, approach, had uh, adopted a cloud native approach that are reporting an increase in cloud threats of more than 630% since the onset of COVID. That's a scary statistic for companies as they continue to try and leverage cloud and continue to try and drive this digital transformation. As everyone drives to maintain productivity, we see employees doing whatever it takes to get their work done, which is understandable, right? This is, this is new for everybody. But sometimes that means that they're circumventing some of the security measures then, that are put in place to protect them. That could be turning off VPN to gain direct access to a cloud, or it could be copying and sharing confidential information with unauthorized users or through unsecure devices. Neither of those is obviously a, a desirable situation. And this has put our customers trying to answer these four questions. How do I simplify the complexity and reduce the cost uh, of what I'm trying to do? How do I support my users and their data in every single location and on every single device they might want to use? The business has to stay running, but the environment we're running in is much different. So that, that's an important one. How do I increase the security posture, but not add cost? And in fact, for most companies, the objective is to actually reduce cost. So that's a, those are conflicting priorities there and not easy for, uh, for companies to, uh, to address that. And then, of course, as cloud becomes more and more ubiquitous in every organization as part of this transformation, how do we pivot from security being something that potentially slows the business down to something that makes security something that enables the cloud? So security as a business enabler, uh, and at the same time, do that in a way that doesn't compromise the security. three objectives that most of our customers will have in common. They may use different words 
every company will phrase these maybe a little bit differently, but ultimately we can distill our many conversations down to these three primary objectives for most security organizations. But delivering on those objectives is not easy and it's, it's, it was never easy. It's made all the more complex now because of the unique environment that we're operating in. And again, it does require us to think about this problem differently. We can not keep thinking about the problem the way we used to because we're operating in a different environment. So we have to embrace that fact and change tack. At McAfee, we see that change landscape as an opportunity to further converge a number of solutions in such a way that we deliver a superior outcome, one that could never be delivered from a fragmented approach. This is a unique opportunity. It's unique times. Many companies are doing some very unique and innovative things. And we believe that it's time for that innovation to actually accelerate and drive the security strategy in most companies. McAfee's Unified Cloud Edge converges CASB, DLP, and Web Gateway solutions to offer unprecedented data protection and threat defense between device and cloud. And that includes a number of things. First of all, you get centralized policy control and incident management, which allows customers to set data policy across device, network, and cloud domains all at once. Or you can run one incident report for activities across all of those you get access control for managed and unmanaged devices. And you have the integrated ability for a threat defense between web and CASB products. What that means is that the web solution benefits from customized risk scores that are derived from more than 50 risk attributes across multiple cloud environments. So this solution strengthens the defense because it converges the different technologies together. So, of course, the, the big question, right, how do you stay ahead of your adversaries, right? The, the bad actors always have kind of first mover advantage, but how do you stay close to or even ahead of them? Knowing exactly when and where you have been attacked is a challenge for sure, but also assessing the impact of those threats to your organization. And it's key. It allows customers to optimize the limited resources and bandwidth they have to respond. So, you have to be able to prioritize and decide, are we actually at risk from the threat that I've observed? Can I predict the impact of a potential attack? Will my security measures hold? Will the defenses hold? And then if I decide that I need to take some action, prescribe that action. What are the devices and machines that are vulnerable and what specific action do I have to take to remedy that? Customers need a broader understanding of what threat actors are doing in real time and actionable intelligence to answer those difficult questions, right? How do you prioritize, predict, and prescribe? McAfee's Insights solution leverages intelligence from more than 1 billion sensors deployed globally across endpoints, networks, and cloud. Couple that with McAfee's advanced threat research team, and they work to understand all of those threats to nuance the detail behind them and, and give that context. And that context is local. So what this means is that we can see what attacks are taking place globally in specific geographies and countries. Furthermore, we can identify which attacks are a priority for each individual customer that has this solution deployed. We can predict if specific companies, industries, or verticals are being targeted. And with that information and knowing how our customers have configured their defenses, we can prescribe actions that should be taken in advance of an attack happening. And that, of course, means that the customer can prevent an attack, which is the most desirable outcome. We will take a look at a moment at how Insights works, but before that, I want to highlight those three interrelated threat readiness questions that I referred to. And think about these in the context of your own organization. Ask yourself the question, do you really know what threats might hit you? 
and how you can prioritize your security posture against them. Can you predict how the security measures that you have deployed will hold up against those threats? Will they stay strong? Will they defend you? And do you have the information you need to proactively tune your security to ensure that it would be effective against new threats that are observed? It's also important to define some key terms as you think about this and think about it in the context of an attack timeline. We divide that attack timeline into what happens before you're hit. And we think about that as a threat or a risk. It hasn't materialized yet, so it's not an attack. It's, it's potentially a threat or a risk. And then what happens afterwards, it, it morphs into being an attack if, if it actually hits you. The protection you have in place, they're either working to block or stop that threat before it actually happens, which is the most desirable outcome. Or in the event that you are hit and there is a breach, those, those measures are working to try and stop that attack from continuing. Threat intelligence feeds from vulnerability management uh, systems are just inadequate to help you with this because they don't have the footprint of sensors to see what's happening, and nor do they have sufficient technology to actually assess the risk and the overall security posture of an organization. So they can't give you that personal insight. In order to deliver real insights, a solution has to include the ability to assess both the potential uh, of the threat and the risk they pose to the uh, complete security posture. In order to do that, you have to have sufficient footprint in, in sensors, you have to have global telemetry, and you have to have the ability to make the assessment and drive that change. In summary, an organization has to be able to assess the threat and manage the risk simultaneously. Only then can you deliver a real insight. And an insight is the ability and, and gives you the power to see into a situation and understand it fully and take the appropriate action. So that's what Envision Insights does and that's what Envision Insights drives. I'll show you now what Envision Insights actually looks like in practice so that it, it's easier to, to grasp and understand. So this is a, a dashboard of a McAfee's Insights tool. You can see all of the campaigns that are being monitored in this organization uh, in the red box that's uh, outlined there. There's 611 campaigns currently being monitored. And the tool is suggesting that 29 out of these 611 campaigns being monitored are relevant and worth paying attention to. Now, immediately there's value in that, right? Because for a security team that has limited capacity and uh, limited bandwidth to uh, fight on all fronts, the tool has reduced the number of campaigns down to just 5% of the total. So there's 29 in there that we need to look at and pay some attention to. We can also see the global prevalence of those campaigns. So which locations, which geographies are they actually operating in? And it advise, it, the tool provides the ability to search that campaign. So in the search string, you can put in the campaign name, and you can find out more information about what that campaign is, how it operates, and what it does. You can see the trends on campaigns that are operating globally. But most critically, the tool gives you uh, insights into the device exposure. So you can see here the number of devices that are considered to have insufficient coverage and that are exposed. That's critical and that's key information because it allows you to focus immediately on the devices that need attention. Since we believe that uh, we, we have a situation with this specific campaign, this, in this example, the tool is suggesting that 29 of the 611 campaigns we monitored are relevant. But we can see as we do look at the campaign search string, we get details on the campaign detail itself, a description of it. We can see clearly from the large red dot that we as a specific company have an exposure to this campaign. 
So we need to pay close attention to this one campaign because it is targeting us. We can see also that uh, we're being targeted more aggressively compared to others in our sector. So this is a targeted campaign and the tool is telling us that we are specifically one of the ones that it's targeting. And as you look into the global picture, you can see immediately that you need to take action fast to avoid other devices being affected as the attack is prevalent in your country. Drill down further. And from here, you can, you can investigate to see if this file has been seen anywhere else in the environment with Envision EDR. Using the IOC findings, you can search EDR uh, to offer even better insights into the investigation. And with those insights, you can see that although the company is not infected by three other campaigns, there are some devices that have insufficient coverage, and if attacked, they would be exposed. That early prediction is what allows you to take action and well in advance of an attack and protect, protect yourself from having to manage and cope with a breach. So understanding the priorities, being able to predict the impact is only part of the picture. The next piece and the final piece of the puzzle is being able to prescribe exactly what measures you need to take in order to address the identified weaknesses. With the Envision Insights tool, you're guided to the countermeasures and the links take you directly to the action that you need to take. There's no need for you to leave the console, you're in EPO. You avoid having to jump between tools and different consoles because that takes time, but it also injects the possibility of error. So the, to the tool by being integrated like this, by being able to take you to the links inside EPO, then you, you can act more quickly but also you can be sure that you have less chance of having any kind of errors. This technology allows you to optimize your threat readiness and response because it unites and aligns risk and threat operations. Envision Insights achieves this with three interrelated components. The first is comprehensive active intelligence from the 1 billion sensors I mentioned, distinct threat anal analysis with human machine teaming, and then unique proactive response to protect capabilities from a single console and coordinated with McAfee and third-party solutions that are also integrated or possible to integrate. We use this robust telemetry, to, uh, telemetry network to provide customers with actionable insights to inform how they measure, operationalize, and invest in cybersecurity. For instance, we can alert a customer if we believe they or their industry are the, the target of a zero-day attack. We can provide a customer with a cybersecurity scorecard that benchmarks their cybersecurity cyber posture against those of their peers and provides suggested actions for improvement. Those are all really valuable insights that can help you to stay ahead of your adversaries. The UC and Insights solutions are only possible because of a number of unique advantages that McAfee has. We've already touched on intelligence to insights and threat defense, um, but I also, I, I don't want to leave this slide without mentioning our cloud leadership. So cloud leader, we, we are the only vendor named as 2020 Gartner Peer Insights Customer Choice Award for CASB. That sets us apart in this technology category, and that's a key and pivotal part of our strategy, but it also addresses a key and pivotal part of our customer's need. The other thing I want to mention is our partner ecosystem. Um, and you know that our tagline is together is power. We believe that the problems we're tackling cannot be solved by one company alone. That's the reason why we work every day with 150 partners uh, who make complementary and even in some cases competing technology. Uh, and we do that to, to make sure that we can integrate that and deliver the best possible outcome for, uh, for customers. I have one final update to share with you this morning before, uh, before I leave you. And that's uh, an update on McAfee's new, newest device to cloud suites. In response to the complexity we're seeing, McAfee have launched three suites to address our customers' foundational security needs. The first is called uh, Envision Advanced. Envision Advanced focuses on proactively optimizing your endpoint threat prevention 
against the latest attack campaigns, keeping your data and devices safe. Moving to the premium suite, this suite completely defends your endpoints and data from advanced attackers inside and outside with real-time investigation and the ability to respond to threats. And then of course, the complete suite. The complete suite is positioned to secure the entire digital transformation end to end, to secure your transformation and also your remote workforce with a unified threat and data protection across endpoint, web and cloud. This suite also empowers your SOC to perform investigations in an easier and a faster way, and that means you can respond more quickly. The suites have been designed with our customers' needs in mind. It makes our solutions easier to consume and manage for end customers. But they're also designed to be easier for our channel partners to work with. As you can see, we've included the insights module that I discussed across all three suites. Um, and if we leverage and deploy that uh, insights module correctly, then we put our customers in a position to seize back control and realize the potential to stay ahead of adversaries. Over the course of the RISC conference, there's a number of workshops that are running where you can learn more about what we've just discussed. But for now, I'll thank you for your time and attention. Uh, and I have got one very important job to do, which is to reveal a letter for the uh, prize that you can potentially win if you gather all of these letters. So this is to make sure you guys have been paying attention. And the letter that you need to remember from me is the letter P. I wish the, uh, the real security team, our customers and partners in the region a very successful risk 2020 and look forward to being with you together in person. I really, really hope at uh, risk 2021. Thank you very much for your time and attention this morning. this thought isn't there you've been talking about how we put uh, so many people now not working in one building but scattered all over the place do you think we as humans are going to really learn to be able to communicate effectively that way because it's so much easier you've just said it you'd like to be here yeah i mean look i i i think it's it's certainly uh, thrown all of the norms into disarray um, it's made us really think how we work, how we live, how we interact with colleagues, customers, even interacting in a conference like this virtually is something that we wouldn't have even thought about doing uh, six months, eight months, uh, a year ago. So I, I, I think when we go back to work, we'll see kind of a hybrid model that means that these protections that we're putting in place, these security measures that we're putting in place to cope with a remote workforce they're still going to be needed even after COVID-19 passes and there is a, a, you know, a shift back to office work. I think we'll see a hybrid model and because there'll be a hybrid model and more and more people still continuing to work remotely, then I think it's critical that we get this right now because we will need it long into the future. Well, I hope you're right, and I hope we do manage to get back, and I hope that it means that I can now get to the UK and sail to Cork next year, and I'll come and visit you. <laughs> yeah, but let me know if you're going to do that. I'll be waiting at the port when you arrive. Thank you very much, Kevin.